Hey everybody, we're here with week three of the weekly vlogs. Love the comments and encouragement I'm getting with these. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to be as comprehensive. I'm going to be, um, by the time this video releases, I'll be somewhere in Vegas with Mango. We're probably going to be degening it up. Wish us some good luck. We're probably going to be playing a lot of blackjack. Hopefully we don't go broke. But um, alas, um, why don't I just first off, you know, at the beginning of every week, just talk about my weekly schedule for streaming on twitch.tv slash tafflicants. So Monday is very likely going to be a recovery day. I might stream in the night. But on Tuesday, we're going to be on the front page once again from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. on um, Pacific time. I'll probably be streaming a little bit beyond that and a little bit before to build it up a bit. So exciting times for Tuesday night from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Definitively, I'll be on front page. Um, and then the rest of the week, it's going to be my brother's birthday, so I'm going to try to arrange a dinner with him. So most likely Wednesday, I'll take the night off. And then most likely Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I'll be streaming. Um, usually my usual time, 8 to about 2 a.m., sometimes like 9.30 to 2 a.m. <clears throat> now I know a lot of people are, are telling me, hey, I can't meet that time. That's a little bit too late. So usually on the weekends and maybe on Fridays, I'm going to try to push it a little bit early so that you guys can watch me live. Um, so I hear you guys. I want to make sure that, um, that you guys can watch me live and that we can accommodate to a wider audience. So I hear you. <clears throat> Lastly, um, so in this week's edition, I'm just going to go answer, go ahead and answer a question that a lot of people ask me is how do I deal with pressure situations? And I'm going to extend this to kind of general philosophy, but a lot of people ask me this in regards to Tetris, you know, when you're at the top of the board in Tetris 99, um, it can get scary and to carve out of those situations where you're at the top, you see the noise coming and you just go like, oh, I don't know what to do here. And you just panic. Um, I have three, you know, points, uh, three pieces of advice I can give you. So first off, you just got to practice, practice and get familiar with the situations as much as you can. <clears throat> and think of all the variables you can control. So in the particular case of Tetris 99, you can look at your bar on the side and see how much lines you're taking. And that can eliminate, if you can calculate the number of lines it takes to kill you, then you know definitively, um, is this gonna kill me or is this not gonna kill me? And the more variables that you know, or the more situations you're familiar with, the better you're going to do, the less panicky you're gonna be. I feel like it's natural to be a little bit scared of the unknown, and when a bunch of variables come at you at the same time, you don't know what's gonna happen, it, it gets scary. Um, I would also say, um, get familiar with building at the top. You can force yourself to build at the top. You can play a faster variation of Tetris, but lo and behold, um, you know, the way that you play Tetris at the bottom of the screen, um, in terms of just raw speed, try to mimic that as best as you can. Like you still got to build fast. I think a lot of people, they panic, they stop thinking, you know, and they think of everything else, but playing the game at hand. So this goes into my next point. Just focus on the game at hand and focus on what's on what's important. So nothing else really matters um, here other than the variables that are important. What piece is next? How do I carve down? Um, how do I build nicely? And how do I build quickly? Nothing else matters. And in fact, a lot of people think that because they, they go slower in those situations, they think, well, it's going to... It's gonna, if I can't see the pieces, they're not gonna come in. But the reality is you're on a very rapid um, sinking ship and the slower you go, the more that gets piled on you. So you just gotta keep building as fast as you can. Um, I would also say, again, out of your vocabulary, the notion of winning or losing, um, because the more you think about winning you think about the results, the more you think about losing or how you look in front of other people, if we're gonna extend this to other things, the less you're thinking about what matters and that's the game itself. And so um, in competitive fighting games, you know, as a former Smash player, a lot of times what a lot of people do is they go, well, I'm playing this really good player. He's gonna do this to me. And the more you think and you fill your mind with that information, the less you're thinking about what you need to do to win. So do your best. I know it's hard. It's natural to think of these other variables that can compound and cloud your decision making. And then lastly, uh, number three, um, try to fight off the best you can the fear of failure. This is you know, one of my biggest demons and I have to use a lot of personal cognitive behavioral therapy to get it out of my head that it's okay to lose, it's okay to learn, and it's okay to grow. Now, fortunately for Tetris 99, it's 
very forgiving in some aspects. You lose, you just play another game. You lose, you just play another game. And just take every game as like a learning experience and try to experiment as much as you can. Um, and you know, this goes for anything, whether it's asking the, the person you like, the girl or the guy or whoever, um, you know, I feel that the fear of failure hinders us from moving forward and making progress in anything we do. Um, now, in the, bringing it back to Tetris, um, this could be why you're panicking, right? Because you don't want to lose. You don't want to see the game over. You want to succeed so hard. But try to, like, clear your mind of those thoughts and focus just on the pieces and how you need to build. Because the more you can get the worries of failure out, the more you're gonna have a lot more clarity. There's a lot of sayings, you know, what's in the Bible or in like a movie quotations that you can only really live once you get over the fear of dying. So you kind of have to like die to yourself. But the more, and it's kind of like Zen like, and granted this doesn't work for everybody, but the more you kind of develop this, hey, like at the end of the day, I really wanna win, but even if I lose, it's okay. The more you can adopt that kind of mindset, at least for me, um, when I do that, I do a lot better because I'm focusing on the right things and I'm focusing on the game itself as opposed to all this other, you know, peripheral stuff. So when you watch me on stream, if I lose, you know, I am disappointed, but I kind of laugh it off and go like, okay, like I could have done this instead. And this is what it really means to have like a growth mindset. So um, anyway, uh, that's it for uh, this week's vlog. Hopefully you guys can watch me on twitch.tv slash and hopefully you guys have a great week.